So now let's take a look at a procedure call in more detail. So we're going to use the same example we had before and we're going to write out the actual code for this. So let's start out and decide where we're going to put our registers. So we've got A, B, G, H, C, K, and M. We have to put them in registers and here's how we've decided to do it. Register 20, 21, 22 are A, B, and C and then G, H, K, and M are in 16, 17, 18, and 19. So let's go ahead and write out the code. So here's main. The first thing we're going to do is branch not equal R20, zero. So this is our A does not equal zero. We go down to else. If we're going to do the if part, now we're going to call jump and link update. And here we expect the update to use R16 and R17. And when it's done, we expect to put the results in R21. So they'll go into B. Then we skip over the else because we've done the if part. Here's our else, and the else is similar. We're going to call jump and link update, but this time we expect update to use registers 18 and 19 for K and M, and we expect the result in register 22 for C. And that's the end of our code. Now let's take a look at the update procedure here. So here's the code for that, and here's how we're going to do this. We're going to put the arguments A1 and A2 in R4 and R5, and use some temporary variables and put the results in register 2. So here's the code for update. You've seen this before. This is just doing our two operations and then doing the subtraction of the two of them. And then when we're done, we return from our procedure call. So here's a question. What's going to happen to the variable a in main when we call update? So to understand this, we want to take a look at who's using what register. So main over here has a and r20. And we're using r20 up here for our comparison. But look what update is doing. Update is using R20 for one of these temporary variables. It actually writes over R20 here when it executes. So the problem here is that since update is going to write over R20, it's going to change the value of A that main had. So if main wants to use A later on in the program, it's now been changed by this update, and that's going to cause a problem. In fact, that's not the only problem. If you look at what else we have here, Update expects to have its arguments in R4 and R5, but main expects them to be taken out of R16 and R17 here, or R18 and R19 here. So that's not going to work. If you look over here, update is returning its value in R2, but main expects the results in R21 or 22, depending on where we are. So again, that's not looking too good. And then we have this problem with these temporary registers. So update writes over R20 and R21, but main uses R20 and R21 for A and B. So writing over these isn't a good thing. So what's going on here? Well, the problem is these two pieces of code aren't coordinated. So main and update aren't coordinating which registers they use for what. And this is a real problem. If you want to call someone else's code, say somebody's written a library that allows you to access the internet or draw pictures on the screen, you need to make sure your code is compatible with them and that means using the right registers. So a question about this lack of coordination. Which of the following is not a reason why we need some way, a convention, for dealing with procedure calls to coordinate things? Well, the answer here is it's not a problem to know where the procedure is. When we call jump and link, we specify where the procedure is. So we always know where it is. That's not a problem. The other ones are an issue. We need to know where the return value goes. We need to know where the arguments go, and we need to make sure we don't overwrite registers with temporary values. So those are all problems with not having a convention for how we use the register file.